Okay, so next we're going to hear on cardiac CT imaging and image fusion guidance in the, in the, the cath lab. Uh, Dr. Thacker, thank you for doing this. All right, thank you, Dr. Lumsden, and good morning, everyone. Um, as Dr. Lumsden alluded uh, earlier today, image fusions do have the potential to enhance imaging in the cath lab. Uh, so I'm going to talk about CT fluoroscopy image fusion in the cath lab with a focus on adult congenital heart disease. All right, so we're going to go over the basics of CT fluoroscopy image fusion, the technical details, and the workflow. Uh, the utility in the cath lab, uh, some, a couple of illustrative cases, and the limitations of the technique as well. Um, on the right, well, on the right, what you're seeing is an image, it was supposed to be a video, uh, an image of uh, the software that's used to perform the image fusion. And you get to see, uh, work with this a little bit more later this afternoon. So what is CT fluoroscopy image fusion? It's, it basically allows you to overlay 3D CT data onto live 2D fluoroscopy. So the end result of that basically is one of two things. You can achieve overlay of the 3D volume onto live 2D fluoroscopy, and that looks something like this. So this is a patient with tetralogy of fallot who presented with pulmonic regurgitation and needed transcatheter pulmonary valve replacement. What image fusion has allowed here is an overlay of the 3D data onto fluoroscopy, which gives us a really good idea about the landing, uh, landing zone for the stent. Alternatively, you can um, have regions of interest that are marked on your pre-procedural CT angiogram and project these to live 2D fluoroscopy, and this is what that would look like. This is also a patient with, uh, with tetralogy of fellow who presented with pulmonic regurgitation. On the right, you see uh, the CT data set and the regions of interest, the landing zone, the main PA, the right and the left pulmonary arteries. Uh, those are the yellow circles that have been electronically marked. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Um, so the, the regions of interest have been electronically marked on the CT angiogram. And performing the image fusion allowed us to project these regions of interest onto live 2D fluoroscopy. So um, how do you perform the image fusion? There are two pathways that you can go down, uh, 3D, 3D fusion, and 2D, 3D fusion. And as the name suggests, 3D, 3D fusion involves the co-registration or the fusion of a 3D data set with a 3D data set. And 2D, 3D is the co-registration of a 2D data set with a 3D data set. The end result uh, via both techniques is the same uh, that we just talked about in the previous slide. Uh, now, the pre-procedural workflow for both techniques is identical, and it starts with a CT angiogram, uh, which is used for your pre-procedural planning and marking of the regions of interest. Um, after that, the patient is taken to the cath lab, and if you choose to go down the 3D, 3D route, you need a 3D data set to fuse the first 3D data set, which is your CT angiogram width. So the patient will get a, an on-table, non-contrast cone beam CT. Now, the cone beam CT system is integrated with the C-arm fluoroscopy system. Uh, and so fusing the 3D data set obtained using the cone beam CT with the pre-procedural CT angiogram allows the overlay of landmarks onto 2D fluoroscopy, uh, excuse me, because of the integration of the cone beam CT with the 2D fluoroscopy system. Alternatively, if you choose to go down the 2D, uh, 3D fusion route, then the pre-procedural CT angiogram, which is your 3D data set, is fused or co-registered with two 2D fluoroscopy images that are obtained on table. Eventually, they allow the same thing. They allow you to optimize your C-arm working angles, and they provide um, kind of a roadmap for device deployment and catheter guidance. So just a side note about the cone beam CT. Uh, so what you see here on the left is the cone beam CT, which is integrated uh, with 2D fluoroscopy, uh, I mean, with your C-arm. And it does differ from your regular CT in the geometry of the X-ray beam that is used to acquire the images, also the image quality. Um, and, and we'll uh, kind of compare the image quality in a little bit, but uh, basically with the cone beam CT, the image quality is not as nice as with your regular dual source of MBCT. So how do you decide whether to go down the 3D, 3D route or the 2D, 3D route? So there are some differences. Uh, with a 3D, 3D route, you do need the intermediate cone beam CT step, and that uh, does make the workflow a little bit more cumbersome, um, and the 2D, 3D uh, workflow in that sense is a little bit more efficient. With 3D, 3D, there's a little bit more exposure to radiation because of the cone beam CT. 
Um, however, when you perform core registration with the 2D, 3D route, what you need is anatomic uh, landmarks that are visible on fluoroscopy to enable the fusion. So the way that the fusion is done is you identify landmarks like your sternal wires or uh, pacemaker leads or uh, something that's that's in close proximity to your regions of interest. And those landmarks on fluoroscopy are matched with, uh, the, with the landmarks on uh, your pre-procedural CT to achieve the fusion. So if you don't have uh, good anatomic landmarks to perform the fusion, then 2D, 3D fusion um, is, is difficult to do. And, and in, that, in that sense, the 3D, 3D uh, route makes it easier because you don't need landmarks uh, visible on fluoroscopy. So I'm going to use uh, transcatheter pulmonary valve implantation as a case study to demonstrate the differences between the workflows. Um, so this is a 27-year-old lady, tetralogy of flow, uh, status post transhandler patch repair, uh, presenting with uh, pulmonic regurgitation. So what we're seeing here, the, this panel basically shows um, uh, planes from the pre-procedural CT angiogram, which is our first data set. This uh, case was performed using 3D 3D fusion for guidance. This panel shows the intermediate cone beam CT images. And so these, Im so you can see actually the differences in the image quality between the two um, data sets as well. And uh, with the 3D, 3D route, basically the, the first 3D data set, which is the CT angiogram, is fused with the on-table cone beam CT, which, are, which is our second 3D data set, and that allows overlay uh, of the 3D volume onto live 2D fluoroscopy. This is the 2D, 3D workflow, and this is a 28-year-old lady with tetralogy of flow as well um, who underwent RVPA conduit repair and presented with pulmonic regurgitation. So here what we've done is, and, and we've seen this image on a previous slide, uh, this is the pre-procedural CT angiogram with the regions of interest that are marked here. This, these are our 2D fluoroscopy images, and what we've done is co-registered the CT angiogram with the fluoroscopy images, which allows us to overlay these regions of interest uh, onto live 2D fluoroscopy. So uh, image fusion does allow us to optimize C-arm angles. Um, so going back to the case that we just saw, once the image fusion is performed, we can rotate the CT data set. Um, and, and if I'm looking at the anatomy in this orientation, once I've performed the image fusion, it tells me that the corresponding angle for the C-arm is going to be RA01 cranial 41. So um, I can set my C-arm to that angle and know what orientation I'm looking at the anatomy in. Um, it does provide intra-procedural guidance. It provides a roadmap for device deployment. And uh, I'm going to discuss a slightly different case uh, to illustrate this point. So this is a 63-year-old gentleman who uh, was found to have a sinus venosus ASD and partial anomalous pulmonary venous return. Uh, through the right upper pulmonary vein, and so I'll show you the anatomy. Uh, so this gentleman has, uh, here's his SVC, here's his left atrium, and the sinus venosus ASD is a defect between the SVC and the left atrium, and the right upper pulmonary vein is partially draining into the SVC and partially into the left atrium. Now this gentleman was a poor candidate for surgery, and so uh, uh, he underwent repair of his uh, ASD transcatheter. So the way, our goal, the way that we wanted to do this was place a covered stent graft in the SVC so that it would occlude the ASD and the RUPV would be baffled into the left atrium. So this is what we were trying to achieve. And so we did this using 3D, 3D image fusion for guidance. And so it really provides a very nice roadmap for stent deployment. Um, and so now we know that we're very accurately positioning the stent such that it covers the ASD very nicely and it's not extending to proximal or too distal into the right atrium. Um, and then there's, there have been reports that uh, image fusion may improve safety and efficiency as well, um, not only in pulmonary valve uh, cases, but also in endovascular aortic repairs, um, in uh, some EP procedures as well. So it does uh, have a lot of different applications in the cath lab. The technique does have some limitations. Uh, the projected regions of interest of the projected 3D volume may not be accurate 100% of the times. 
Uh, differences in patient positioning might uh, affect accuracy. If the patient inadvertently moves on the table, then co-registration is lost, and uh, you would have to perform co-registration again. Um, regions of interest are not tracked with respiratory or cardiac movements. Uh, and then once you introduce stiff virus or devices in the vasculature, it m might cause some deformation, and that might uh, cause the regions of interest to be less accurate as well. Um, the overlay is not available in the lateral plane, and uh, of course it does require additional training for technologists to be able to perform uh, the image fusion as well. So that really brings me to the end of my discussion. I'd like to thank Dr. Lin for his mentorship and Quanraj for a lot of the, um, it, the content here. Thank you.